Welcome back to the Pig & Whiskey Test Kitchen. Today we will be using the smoker to cook birria tacos. Let's get started. First we're going to fill our charcoal chimney, taking extra care not to spill any charcoal. Once we light our charcoal, we will move over to the smoker and load up the basket. Remove the lid. Use any remaining charcoal left in the bag to fill the basket. That should be plenty. Now we're going to use our lit chimney to spread around on top of the charcoal, which will light our fire. Now replace the lid. Adjust the intakes, and once it's up to temperature, we are going to remove the lid once again and place our wood chunks inside the smoker. Replace the baffles and the grate. Then put the lid back on and come back up to temperature. Now, while that's coming up to temperature, Let's move inside and start preparing our meat. Today we have a three pound chuck roast. We're gonna start off with a little sriracha binder. You wanna use a glove for this. So after coating both sides, we're going to sprinkle salt liberally across the surface of the meat. We also have about a tablespoon of peppercorns ground in the spice grinder. We're going to coat this evenly across the surface, reserving enough for the other side. And again with the salt and with the rest of the pepper. And you may be thinking that we should add garlic to complete the SPG, but we will be adding plenty of garlic in the sauce later on. Now that the meat is rubbed, let's head to the smoker. Needles up, we are good to go. We're going to remove the lid and let the smoke dissipate a bit before placing the meat on the smoker. Replace the lid and set your timer for one hour. After one hour, we're going to remove the lid. We're going to spin the grate and flip the meat. And all this does is just ensure even cooking on the top, bottom, and sides of the meat. Okay, after we've turned our meat, replace the lid and set your timer for one hour. Meanwhile, we will work on assembling our sauce. Here we have approximately six to eight Guajillo chilies. They have been washed and dried, and now we are removing the seeds and any pith we see visible. There is no reason to save these seeds as the drying process renders them sterile. Otherwise, we would maybe plant a crop of guajillo chilies in the garden, but unfortunately that is not possible. So take your time, remove the seeds as thoroughly as possible. If the pods tear, that is okay. Uh, but try to keep them whole as toasting them later will be much easier. Once you have your chilies clean, we're going to remove them and place them into a heated cast iron skillet. We are going to toast these over medium high heat. So we will use tongs to keep them moving so that they don't burn. Once the chilies begin to smoke, 
we are going to add two cups of beef stock. Kill the heat and stir the chilies to make sure they are thoroughly saturated. Once we do this, we're going to let this sit for approximately 20 minutes while we assemble the rest of the sauce. Now for the sauce. We're going to start with five cloves of garlic, crushed and peeled. After you finish with the garlic, we are going to peel one whole onion. Once you are finished with that, we are going to set up the food processor and prepare to mix our ingredients together. Into the bowl goes one whole onion, five cloves of garlic, one tablespoon of adobo seasoning, any brand will do. And to that we'll add a pinch of salt. And then we will retrieve our chilies. Careful as the liquid may still be hot enough to burn you. Place all the chilies and liquid in the bowl. And we're going to pulse a few times to mix it together and then set it on high and let it run for one minute. Once we are thoroughly mixed, we are going to scrape the contents into a measuring cup. To that we're going to add our acid which is two tablespoons of red wine vinegar and to that we're going to add five individual cloves. And after that one-third of a stick of cinnamon and mix it all together. Now, once we have our sauce made, we're going to retrieve the meat from the smoker. It has been two hours since we placed it on. It now has nice, beautiful color. We're not looking for typical thick black bark that you would see on a brisket. At this point, we're going to wrap our chuck roast in foil. So we want to Tear off a fairly large piece as we are going to double it over. Now it's important that we use a double ply of heavy duty foil because we do not want to lose any of the juices from the meat. The meat's still quite warm so use your tongs to place it on the foil and fold up the sides creating somewhat of a boat. And to that, we're going to drizzle our sauce over the top of the roast and around the sides. Now, this is the most important part of the entire video. We need to thoroughly seal the foil. We don't want any moisture to escape, so you definitely want to tighten it down and seal it up as best as possible. Okay, once you have your foil pack, you're going to place it back on the rack. Careful as the rack may still be warm from the smoker. Once we have that placed on the rack, we are going to use a foil pan. And this is a trick that pitmasters use as the chilies contain a certain amount of sugar, placing the foil pack directly on the grate above the fire in a drum smoker will cause it to burn on the bottom. So by placing the rack inside a foil pan, we're going to create an insulated pocket of air around the roast so that it does not burn. 
After putting the meat back on the smoker, we're going to replace the lid. Once the roast has reached an internal temperature of 210 to 215 degrees, we're going to remove it and rest it for one to two hours. I really wish YouTube had smell-o-vision at this point because the aroma coming from that foil pack right now is completely unbelievable. Remove the cinnamon stick. Now we're going to be very careful as we do not want to lose any of that precious sauce. We want all the fat, all the sauce, anything we can salvage from the foil pack. Set that aside. Now we're going to break down the meat. I only let mine rest for about an hour. I probably should have gone for two uh, as it was burning my hands while I was pulling the meat. Here we're going to remove any big bits of gristle or fat that did not render out. But for the most part, we are just breaking it down and then we are going to wrap it back up and place it in the fridge. Now don't forget about the drippings. We're gonna cover that tightly and place it in the fridge as we will use it later. Okay, fast forward. It is now the following day. We are going to retrieve our cast iron skillet and the sauce from the fridge. And if you notice, there will be a fatty disc that has congealed on top of the sauce. We're going to remove that and place it in the pan. And the sauce is a little thicker than we would like, so we're going to add approximately one quarter cup of water. Just enough to thin it down. This will be our dipping sauce for our tacos later. We're gonna place that into a pan and set it on low to bring up the temperature. We have retrieved our meat from the fridge and now we are placing it in the cast iron skillet. It is still cold, which is fine, um, but we are going to arrange it on half the pan. If you have any leftover, return that to the fridge. Next up, we are getting our charcoal ready on our grill. Once the coals are up to temp, we're gonna place our griddle on the grates and our cast iron skillet. Once everything in the cast iron skillet has come up to temp, we are going to take our tortillas and dip them in the oil and spread them around on the griddle, just trying to evenly coat them with the fat. Then we're gonna place meat on the inside and cover that with a generous handful of grated Monterey Jack. Once we fill the tacos, we are going to fold them over, press them firmly, and move them to the back of the griddle to continue to cook. And we will begin assembling our next taco dipping the tortilla in the oil and just flipping it, moving it around, just trying to coat the tortilla thoroughly. Uh, again, placing meat on the inside and covering with Monterey Jack cheese. The cast iron skillet with the oil has, um, has heated the meat along with the oil so 
we're not just placing cold meat into the tortillas. It is slightly warm. We're gonna continue until we use all of our meat. And we will focus on not burning the tacos. So after you push them to the back, you'll wanna keep an eye on them. And flip them when you think they're done. That one got a little bit toasty, but it's quite all right. It's still very delicious. Now that our tacos are done, we're going to bring them inside where we have our au jus that has been heated. Uh, into that, we have thrown in some onions and cilantro. Think of it as taco lubrication so that you might shove as many tacos as possible into your mouth. Here is the finished product. Please enjoy. We would like to thank you for joining us today in the Pig & Whiskey Test Kitchen. We look forward to seeing you next time.